guys, welcome. This is a general reading for the collective of all signs for the full moon in Sagittarius. Um, my helping hand, Leo, is joining us. He is almost two, and so I'm trying to, um, he's, he's in training for how to be a good boy while mommy works, so <laughs> fingers crossed it goes as planned. <laughs> Anyway, um, I'm going to start with some oracle using moonology, then I'm going to give you a little bit of the astrology of this lunation, and then I'll jump into tarot. It is time stamped for your convenience. All right, let's see what comes through here. What do we think about this full moon in Sagittarius? Oh my goodness. Expect powerful change, step out of your comfort zone, and it's time to release negativity. Well, full moons are about release, so we definitely sort of want to be open to shifts and change. We did have that Jupiter and Uranus conjunction last month. That's just, they're just starting to move apart now. Um, so no longer conjunct, but that's what I'm thinking of with the expect powerful change. Um, I do believe for this particular full moon, there is also a difficult energy between Mars and the North Node. Yeah, Mars and the North Node. So what that's sort of telling you, when I say difficult energy, it's really the geometry of how the planets are interacting with each other. So, you, you know, the power is what I'm feeling with Mars and change is what I'm feeling for the North Node. So keep that in mind. Step out of your comfort zone. This card is actually the North Node. So um, that sort of speaks to that part of the lunation that is might require you to kind of really um, change for the better, but in a way that doesn't feel uh, very much like hand in glove. It might, you know, be way out of your comfort zone. So you're going to want to release some negativity. And I've always seen Sagittarian energy as generally positive and uplifting. They're the great adventurers and wanderers of the Zodiac. So, you know, the travelers and the culture, it just feels to me like you know, if we release the negativity, it makes it easier for us to adapt. Sagittarius is a mutable sign. So there you have it. Let me go ahead and, sorry, Leo, um, talk to you about this lunation. So it's going to um, be at its peak at 9.53 a.m. Eastern time on the 23rd of May. So we will have the sun in Gemini, which represents sort of the lower mind, right? Um, ideas, logic, perception of reality, etc. And that's opposite the moon in Sagittarius, which represents the higher mind. So more spiritual wisdom, expansive per, uh, perceptions, the realm beyond logic and reason, where we first acknowledge our intuition as a method for understanding our relative world. Um, so thus, this lunation is a divine reminder for us to not lose sight of the big picture. It invites us to build bridges between intuition and logic and encourages us to release the limiting beliefs that prevent us from opening our minds, right? The Sagittarius energy and expanding toward new directions. So it really kind of follows the Oracle here. There is in this particular lunation, there's a focus on truths being revealed here. So I've been seeing that in that same theme of truths being revealed in recent readings. So I wanna say um for that whole first series of readings for the first half of the month and now that i'm getting into a new series it keeps kind of coming back so i feel like i'm pulling a thread around some truths being revealed that this moon may right put on blast <laughs> is what i'm trying to say so you want to be sure to release your own illusions and allow what truly is to be seen so that is my 411 for the full moon in Sagittarius. I'm trying to boilerplate these down a little bit more for you and just give you really good little sound bites, um, chunks, golden nuggets that you can grab onto. 
um, that are the most important. So, come on, cards. So now I'm going to pull some tarot for you. I'm going to do an abbreviated Celtic cross. For those of you who are, ha are in any of the memberships, meaning any of the individual Zodiac memberships, the monthly memberships, or the all access pass, the extended will be uploaded for you. So you will have to go into moments.com uh, and scroll to the full moon collection to see your reading. I just want to remind, because there are a whole bunch of new people in the individual Zodiac readings that don't seem too sure on how to access it. So that's why I'm letting you know. And the extended will go all the way through the Zodiac. And it's more like little mini three card readings for each sign. Um, actually, a one major card and then, you know, some clarifiers to give you an idea um, on a more personal level of what to expect for this full moon. That is good for all Zodiac signs, Sun, Moon, ri Rising, and Venus. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Queen of Wands. I love that. She seems kind of joyful here. And what is um, crossing the Queen of Wands is the Empress. That's Venus. So it's kind of interesting to me because I feel like with the Queen of Wands, there's something that's um, about like a, a, a reclaiming of power, your inner sense of personal power. And the Empress is, you know, a little bit more receptive. So there's a yin yang kind of an energy here. Let's see where we go. Nine of Cups in your unconscious awareness, right? Wish fulfillment. Um, maybe there could be some complacency that you've been dealing with in the past. Judgment, that's Pluto. Um, so possibly considerate. There could have been for some of you some, and do. Remember, it's general and it's for all the signs. So you want to take it as it resonates for you. For some of you, it could have been a reunion, a reconciliation, um, and a, a, an acceptance of an apology and an offering of forgiveness and second chances. So take it as it speaks to you. Coming through right here in your conscious awareness, Queen of Pentacles. So that's, you know, almost um, focusing on what you need in this moment to feel solid and grounded. Um, and it is also a feminine archetype of life partner and then going forward six of swords. So that looks to me like getting beyond any drama, trauma, tragedy, moving to some calmer waters, getting the peace of mind that you've been seeking. Spirits talking about the seven of wands, the hidden energies is the lovers and then uh, moving forward the knight of pentacles. So the knight of pentacles is interesting here because it's about um, a potential offer, but it comes from some super conscious intention. And therefore it moves slower. When you have somebody coming towards you with Knight of Pentacles energy, it means they are crossing their T's, they are dotting the I's, they are beginning with the end of mind, they wanna make sure they have it right. So they're not impulsive, it's not Knight of Wands. They don't say things on impulse like the Knight of Swords. There's nothing they gotta clear up if they're being cautious. So I just want to make sure that you know things are something could be coming towards you slower than you may prefer. Okay, and then full moon in Sagittarius may be bringing that to light. Spirit's talking to you, seven of wands, about resistance and defensiveness, right? You want to be a little bit aware of that tendency in yourself, but also of your partner We've got the lovers in the hidden energy. So what might be happening in behind the scenes that you can't see is this person um, choosing the connection. So it feels uh, like it, they may be choosing it slowly. This offer that's coming toward you may come toward you slowly. So it's good to focus on yourself, to feel your inner sense of power and authority, but not to have to give up your openness and receptivity to do so. Let's go with the clarifiers. Hermit, the fool. I feel like you've been um, giving something a lot of thought, focused maybe on yourself, your own personal growth, your own self-awareness, 
taking time to kind of be more introspective, but now it's almost like the time has come. You've given it a lot of thought already. With that Four of Swords, it's like, yeah, I've reviewed it all. I, I've given this a good look and I'm ready to take a leap. I, that's why I feel the Fool, which is Uranus, by the way, um, is really connecting here with that Queen of Wands sense of I'm back, baby. You know, <laughs> and I've done a lot of journeying on my own and I've really taken a good deep look, uh, taken a radical self inventory, try to focus on myself, which also goes to our queen of pentacles here. She is about self-care, of course, but she's really comfortable in her life as it's like she's got all her ducks in a row. She's taking care of business, she's taking care of life at home um, and out there in the world at large. So it, it seems to me like the only challenge I'm seeing here for those of you watching is you don't have to, you know, kind of forsake the openness to some energy coming towards you at in order to um, stand in your power okay you can kind of be um, you can tap into the softer energies of the empress okay without losing your sense of power and groundedness i know it's a tricky little wicket there but i feel like that's the message so let's see the nine of cups Temperance. Wow, three major arcana here. So we have, um, like, remember, what was it? Field of Dreams. If you build it, they will come. That's sort of what I've got going on here. You know, Temperance is that higher octave of Sagittarian energy of of, as I said, the, the um, spiritual wisdom, um, the patience to understand that if you kind of go with the flow, all the energies come into flow and balance eventually. So it's about the wisdom of patience and keeping one foot on the ground and one foot in your feelings. You don't have to give up one for the other. And like, there it is, the patience pays off and look, she's jumping for joy here. And we have judgment coming back, the second chances of it all, the um, maybe some forgiveness might be necessary for some of you, for others of you. It's just the reunion. It's just coming back together. It's everything that you've waited for that, you know, you built it in your mind, you built it with your intentions, you built it in your intuition as well. Um, and here you might have that opportunity. So let's see judgment in the past. Eight of swords, five of wands, nine of wands. Okay, so this seems like the before story, um, meaning that uh, second chances and forgiveness wasn't possible. Uh, definitely stuck with, you know, the the... the the awareness of the conflicts, the tension, something that just wasn't gelling. Um, and though you persevered, I feel like there was just nowhere to go with the energy. That was then, this is now. So you're processing in your unconscious awareness the unfinished business of the past. And something where it just kind of got hung up on um, some kind of maybe even sense of competition uh, could have been you know, old partners, other people in the mix, hangers on, things that wouldn't release or let go. And so there you were stuck without the ability to kind of trust that you were making the next, taking the next best step. So I feel like you've persevered and now it comes back around. Let's see the queen of pentacles. Yeah, I mean, just look at her. She seems so at peace and comfortable in her own skin and patient and wise and solid mm -hmm. strength card confident you can overcome the obstacles king and queen of pentacles right with some message from the heart coming towards you or you both offering each other sincere messages from your heart it can be a message of love or apology, so keep that in mind since I keep seeing judgment here. For some of you, that's what that's about. 
is forgiveness. And it feels like it's like you're really confident and sure that you can both help each other overcome the obstacles of the past and move forward as long as you're being honest and sincere with each other, sharing those feelings that might have been more difficult to share in the past. Let's see the Six of Swords moving forward. Get, yes, getting beyond this sense of rejection or abandonment or devaluing even. I'm going to connect that back to the Queen of Pentacles, knowing your worth. And so you get to move beyond that. But you hit this crossroads moment here where you have to make a decision. Um, as you move past the Five of Pentacles, which often involves some measure of um, instability, right? Um, something that there's insecurity in the foundation of this connection. But it also is because you feel like somebody, you know, the conflict left you stuck. You, you weren't the one who could have taken the action that was needed. And now just anticipating things coming back around and the the, the reconciliation here or the reunion here after really searching yourself and, and, and feeling ready to take a chance on that, well, you're going to need to make that decision. Am I far enough, enough past? Are we far enough past what was insecure between us? What was uh, unstable between us? Where we were sort of... Mm, uh, negotiating each other with some energy of um, disavowal of the connection on some level, the six of pentacles underneath, reciprocity, equal give and take, generosity. And it feels to me like that's part of the mission moving forward is coming to terms with that, um, doing a a deep dive to find the clarity around this. Are we really past it? Can I let that go? And can we move forward? And is there an opportunity for some measure of give and take, like in a normal relationship here in 3D? So that's what I think we're looking at. I'm gonna go ahead and um, pull for the Seven of Wands, your message from Spirit. Keep an open mind. Don't try not to be too defensive and resistant because this is speaking to the future. Some information might become available that will give you a glimpse into the future. So you want to kind of maybe surrender to that a little bit. Um, wait for some enlightenment before you give somebody the cold shoulder, which is sort of how it's coming through. So I do feel there's a potential here for some information or a message to come in from your person, let's see the lovers, that may speak to um, the future of this relationship, life partnership themes. We do have the King and Queen of Pentacles, the Moon, the Ace of Cups, the Three of Pentacles. So yeah, this person is scared. There's <laughs> a little bit unnerved and apprehensive but they love you this is like you're the love of their life they have to choose the love despite their fears their worries what they they don't know maybe how you will respond but they're all in the three of pentacles is cooperative energy it's co-creative in nature as well so it definitely feels to me like this person is working out their fears um, you can't see it, but it's happening. They understand they have a choice to make. And so that two of swords technically belongs to both of you because it's going to take two, right? Are we beyond the ish? Have we moved past whatever that five of pentacles is about? It might be different for each one of you. Some of you will have felt very devalued by your person or by the situation and the dynamic between you. Others of you might have been flat out ghosted, completely felt abandoned. So the two of swords is like that crossroads moment where you both have to decide, can we move beyond it? Wow. And we have the um, potential outcome going forward. Knight of Pentacles. Ten of Swords. Eight of Cups. King of Cups. Woo! Move slow yourself. 
I feel like this King of Cups um, coming in slow, right? Maybe struggling to express their feelings, come to terms with their feelings because of the way things ended in the past. I am not seeing this as part of what's happening in the future. I see that what's coming in the future is your person moving very, very slowly and deliberately because their feelings run deep. And last time, it, things did not go well. So I definitely feel maybe apologies around that with this page of cups could be coming in, forgiveness and second chances, but I feel like this person moving slowly comes in with an offer from their heart. Um, you can't see that, that's unfolding behind the scenes, but it feels to me like they're gonna do it scared, but they're gonna do it. So that's what I have for you so far. And in the extended, as I said, I'll take a deeper dive on all signs, Aries through Pisces. I do group it by elements so you can kind of feel the energy of, um, you know, fire signs, earth signs, air signs, water signs, and it's good for sun, moon, rising, Venus. So the links to that are below. And um, let me give you the astrology that showed up here. We have the queen of wands is Aries energy. Um, Venus here in the Empress, which is Taurus and Libra. We just moved out of Taurus season. Hermit is Virgo. The Fool is the planet Uranus, which rules Aquarius. We have Sagittarius in the Temperance card. Judgment is here twice. That's Pluto, which rules Scorpio. The Sun is the Sun, rules the sign of Leo. We have the Queen of Pentacles, Capricorn. The Strength card is Leo. And our Page of Cups, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, and the King of Pentacles is Taurus. And then from Spirit, Page of Swords, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, Hanged Man is Neptune, uh, which rules Pisces. The Lovers is Gemini, in honor of Gemini season. The Moon here is Pisces, and we'll close out with the um, Knight of Pentacles is Virgo, and the King of Cups is associated with the sign of Scorpio. So that's what I have for you guys. Looks like a really interesting full moon. Um, release the negativity, expect powerful change. I think you are with that Queen of Wands. You're like, I'm in, let's go, let's shake it up, step out of your comfort zone, because something might be coming towards you that will give you an opportunity to get the wish fulfillment that you missed in the past. That's what I have. Full moon blessings to all. I'll see you at the extended. Bye for now.